So how can we determine the distance to a star from its temperature? We start off with a few things that we've observed from the properties of neighboring stars. And the first thing is this uh, connection between the temperature of a star and its luminosity. And shown here are essentially data from many, many stars um, along this mean sequence. So essentially the higher the temperature, the higher the luminosity. We also, from very close stars, like let's take a star like Vega. So, so if we take Vega, Vega from parallax measurements we know is about 25 light years away. Now, now unfortunately, parallax will only work um, out to about 600 or so light years. Um, from the distance and its brightness, we were able to determine Vega's uh, luminosity, and it turns out to be about the 40 times the luminosity of our sun, and that's generally written like this, 40 solar luminosities. So this is data that we can do. So, so then, let's, if we observe another star, so if we observe data on a, on a, on a different star, what, what we can observe are the following things. We can observe its peak wavelength, and that immediately gives us the surface temperature. So let's say that the surface temperature is, um, let's say for this new star, the surface temperature is 25,000 Kelvin. 25,000 Kelvin. And then we can also compare its brightness in the sky, say compared to Vega. So its brightness, let's say compared to Vega, is say 900 times dimmer. So it's a dim star in the sky. Okay, so from these measurements and knowledge about the main sequence, we're going to be able to determine the distance to this to the star. So first off, twenty five thousand Kelvin. We start here. We 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 go from this point and we go up. We read up on the uh, HR diagram. Um, we get to somewhere around here. We we read to the left. So we read this way, and we pick off the, um, the luminosity. Each one of these, so this, is, this line is, is 1,000, that would be 2,000, 3,000. This is, this is about 4,000. So, so we'd say that the luminosity, so, for, so from this, this immediately implies that the luminosity of this star is about uh, um, 4,000 solar luminosities. Yeah? So from this pattern, we're able to tell what the luminosity is. Comparing it to Vega, we find that this star has a luminosity of 100 times the luminosity of Vega. So the, this was the luminosity of Vega over here, which was 40 solar luminosities. We found that our star is 4,000 solar luminosities, so that's 100 times. So 100 times. If, if they were at the same distance, If they're at the same distance, that would imply that this star would have to be a hundred times brighter. But it's not. Okay? It's 900 times dimmer. So, because of that, what we have is we have um, this star would have to be much farther away. It has to be at least 10 times further um, to, to get to offset this. So if you took, if you took to this star and parked it 10 times further, so, so if it's so 10 times the distance would imply the same brightness. All right. So if they're, if they're at the same distance, they'd be 100 times brighter. If you if you move it back 10 times further, they would have the same brightness in the sky to to, to offset this because the, because as you move something, if you go 10 times, that'll be 100 times dimmer, and that would that would offset the 100 times the luminosity. Another 30 times gets you 900 times dimmer. Okay. So you go from 100 times brighter, and you move it back, you get you get the same brightness, you move it back another 30 times, another 30 times gets you 30 squared times dimmer, or 900 times dimmer. 
Okay, so we have time 10 times 30. So this star is 300 times farther away times the distance to Vega. 300 times 25 light years is 7,500 light years. So this star, from really just temperature measurements and brightness, we're able to get the distance at 7,500 light years. Now notice that this is further than um, we can get with parallax. And so this method allows us to uh, determine distances of stars uh, for much for much further. Sometimes this is called spectroscopic parallax, but I prefer never to use that term simply because it has nothing to do with parallax. All we're doing is we're having a variable that's correlated with luminosity, in this, in this case the temperature, it's correlated with luminosity, using the luminosity and brightness to get distance.